1-6-5-7-5-0-4-0-3. Chrissy emails, hey guys, uh, when Marty uh, Schottenheimer was head coach of the Browns, did he also coach the defense? I believe that he did. Joe in Shalersville, while watching football this weekend, and I noticed on two separate occasions that players who scored touchdowns did somersaults as they crossed the goal line or later in the end zone. Devin Hester actually did two somersaults. Neither of the players were flagged for excessive celebration for taking the celebration of the ground like Benjamin Watson and Massaqua were. It seems to me these flips were premeditated and obviously went to the ground, yet no penalty was given. Any ideas? I think the rule says two two guys can't be on the ground. One can. Is that correct? And just for the record, I think Hester went three times. <laughs> three flips. Right, but, uh, but, but nobody else joined right, him yeah, on the ground. As long as nobody but, else joined him on the ground. But it was seem seemingly premeditated. And him going to the ground also was in the failed backflip attempt when he just landed on his chest, essentially. Who, who are you talking about? Hester. He tried to do, oh, that, to try to do the backflip as right. well, and he fell short, and he ended up laying on the ground because he missed <laughs> right. the backflip. And also, the, the NFL, or at least the, the one guy they use, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Peroy or whatever it is, um, said the discretion should have been the better part of valor. Right. Not that he said it was a mistake, but he wouldn't have called it. Mike Pereira. Right. Mike Pereira. Yeah. There you go. Let's go to the BSJ, Barbershop J. Good evening. Les, what's happening? How you doing, Jay? Where you been? Oh, man, everywhere in there. You come out of hiding just when these guys come out. That's right, that's right. Hey, I got a message for you. Uh, Hold on one there. second. Uh, this just in from the newsroom. It was Marion Barber who tried the backflip and failed for the Bears. Oh, my fault. That's okay. Ah. All right, uh, I missed on Swisher. <laughs> you guys missed on Hester. Go ahead. Hey, let, um, Herm tells me to tell you hello. Who's that? Mr. Harvey. Yeah, how's he doing? He's doing good, man. He's got a birthday coming up. He'll be 25. Herman Harvey, former Browns player. When he's on this, it's the RV show. That's right. And if you would, uh, give Patrick a hello for me, man. It's been a while since I talked to him, but uh, I just looking. want to say hello to Patrick and all the guys over there at the staff. He's not here tonight. He's, uh, he's no right. show. I think he has strep throat. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> did you or, append or needed an appendectomy. Does he want a new Oh, uh, yeah, uh, so he couldn't play? What's going on? Hey, I just got to... You, you said something before you went to the break there as far as Colt McCoy is concerned, and I got to agree 3,000% with you. If the right side of your offensive line is atrocious or weak, why does he continue to roll right? And what's the over-under on the Browns throwing a screen pass or running a screen play? While I don't think they have out? it in the book. Does the West Coast offense have a screen pass in the book? It's too short. We have, it's too, five, yeah, it's got to be five, five or six five yards. Five seven down. yards. Okay, so, again, Colt rolling to his left. Why don't they roll him to the strong side? Rolling to his left, well, I think that's the strongest. I think that's partly not every play, but a lot of it is happy feet, and that's the way he knows to go, and he feels more comfortable throwing from the the right than he does from the left. Would you guys agree? Well, yeah, I mean, just f physics. I mean, if he rolls to his left, he's throwing across his body. Right. You know. Um, you know, and also Joe Thomas is there to protect his blind side. You know, so rolling. You know, keep him behind you. You know, keep and he him can see what's back, in front. And, and and see what's in front of you. And to the pass protection mm -hmm. point. Uh, Pashos wasn't bad. A lot, if you if you if you watch a lot of the tape or go back and see some of the, the shots, a lot of the pressure was coming in the inside, and it was it was Pinkston and uh, Laval that were getting blown up in the in the middle. Right. And and you know Thomas and Pashos did did a, did a really good job. The thing that outside. concerned me though, you get back to, back to play calling. I, it's easy to look at the Cribs pass play and, and because it blew up in their faces, but. You entrusted your quarterback for eight to ten yard passes, and you're asking Cribs to throw a longer one in that win. That's Thank that's you. a questionable call. Yeah, and then Thank I, you. I actually hey, I'm saw. Them. Left. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks, yeah. Jay. I actually yeah. saw them practice that play in, in training camp, and it was kind of a goofy looking play in training camp too. But it worked for completion against the Browns defense. I'll be honest with you. I was surprised. <laughs> well, <laughs> and they knew it was coming. I was surprised that. Nobody seemed open on that play. You would think somebody would have been taken taken on that play. Well, it, was, it was Greg Little during the uh, during training camp. It was cribs to Little, and, right. uh, and it was that weird where he fake Spun reverse around. and then sp spins back, doubles back, and throws it. All right. Let's uh, go to Danny, who's in Twinsburg. Danny, go ahead. You're on the air. How you doing, Les? Hi, Danny. First time caller. Enjoy your show. Nice to have you. A um, couple of things. The Peyton Hillis thing. Um, I don't understand why people don't realize the game of football. When, if, would Peyton Hills get a lot more carries if the score was 10-7? I truly believe that. You know, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of hearing about this contract thing, and he's, told, he's got an attitude with the contract. I truly believe that the game was closer, like Sherman said. You know, if, if, if the game was 31 or whatever, you have to start throwing the ball. I think they just Well, here's the other ball. thing. If, if, I, if I threw two guys' names at you, if I said Pat Shermer and Eric Mangini, which coach would you think might be punishing a guy if there was some off-the-field situation? 
Wouldn't, most people would say Mangini, right? Correct. So we don't know enough about Shermer yet, but it certainly seems out of character that he would do that and take away the opportunity to give your, have your best weapon to win a game. So I, I, can't bel I believe something happened or there was some talk about the situation, but I can't believe that Shermer held out his best offensive weapon. Right. To make him look bad or whatever guys like that do. And one more thing. Wait, hold on. Quick. Scott, you've got a thought. And it's not just the, the carries that I think bother a lot of people. It's the, he, he's not in there for the pass plays as well. He's a, he, can, he has good, good hands. Right. Um, Which they sold us on when they said they're going to the West Coast offense. Right. And or he's, North, yeah, West Coast. And he's, you know, maybe marginal, but better than Monterey Hardesty and Blitz pickup. So if you want, if you, you know, it just doesn't make sense to have him wearing that long coat over his shoulders on the sideline right. when he's the better runner, the better pass catcher, and the better blocker. Right. Of the so team. that doesn't take, that, that's prior to the garbage time stuff. You're right about, you know, 60 pass attempts. That's because the way the game unfolded. But, right. uh, yeah, there's no reason to go for two, three, four yards when you're down by uh, 18 points. Right. And Anything real else, Real Dan? quick, real quick about the Jim Tomey thing. Yep. I just think Cleveland is just hurting so bad for a hero or just something to grab onto because Jim Tom are we saying that Jim Tomey is the second greatest Indian ever with a statue? No, but you might be saying in the last fifty years he was. Really? In fact, you know, Bob Feller finished in fifty five. So let's go to nineteen sixty. Who tell me who the greatest player with the Indians since nineteen sixty? I in my myself, I think Omar. Well, Omar, okay, but from a okay, but from a numbers standpoint. Right. I, I see your point. I'm just I just yeah. I what what do you think? Since nineteen sixty. Chicks dig the long ball. Yeah. So. And, and, and <laughs> I Thanks, Danny. I'm one of the it's it's a it's usually fifty fifty, especially like on Twitter and when you get into debates whether Omar Vizquel should be in the Hall of Fame. I am very much on the pro side of him it's being in the Hall of Fame. One, as far as I'm concerned. Um you know, you talk to like the Keith Laws of the world who want to say that even Ozzie Smith shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you but know, he is. Um, but you know, Jim Tomey is the surefire, you know, Hall of Famer as an Indian, uh, you know, of, of of that group. So I think, you know, to your point, recent, you know, if you want to go back to fifty-five or sixty, whatever, that's fine. But you know, if you want to recent, he is the guy. You know, as sad as that may be, you know, no, I whether mean, it's clinging to a hero or not. Go further back. You know, the old timers will say Lou Boudreau. Lou Boudreau didn't have numbers like Jim Tomey. You know, you want to talk Chris Speaker in nineteen twenty? Be my guest. Talk. You're talking ninety years now. Right. Well, and I, so, I think you're right. I think a lot of the logical, the the problems people have with the logic of that is that even on those teams, Jim Tomey. They kind of feel was second fiddle to Manny Ramirez or an Albert Bell, maybe. And so I think that a lot of fans take that the wrong. They can't look at Jim Tomey in that vacuum where his numbers stand on their own because he wasn't even the strongest player on those teams that we remember. So maybe well. so, but he, he did have his. Despite the fact he went elsewhere for a lot of years, right. he still had longevity here yep. and has numbers that'll never be topped: home runs and walks and runs scored and all that stuff. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Want to tell you about a new restaurant at Fairmount Circle? It's a great place called the North Park Grill. A friend of mine opened it about uh, six eight weeks ago, and it's terrific. I've been